In this notebook, we'll start by covering what k-nearest neighbors is, we'll proceed to talk about how it works, and then how to use k-nearest neighbors in Python. Throughout this notebook, we'll also go over what pipelines are and how to use them. As far as what k-nearest neighbors is, it's a model that uses the k-most similar observations in order to make a prediction. You can see this in the video. Here is roughly how k-nearest neighbors works. The user specifies a value for k. In the example, we chose k equals 5 neighbors around the black point. The second step is to search for k observations in the data that are nearest to the measurements of an unknown sample. The third step is to use the most popular target value from the k-nearest neighbors as the predicted target value. Since we have a majority of green points around the black point, we assign a green label to it. As far as the advantages for k-nearest neighbors, this algorithm is relatively easy to understand and explain. Another advantage is this algorithm could be used for classification or regression. Some disadvantages include it must store all the training data. Additionally, its prediction phase can be slow when n is large. Another disadvantage is it typically has a worse performance than other supervised learning methods. As usual, we're going to import the libraries that we want to use. We're going to use the iris dataset. We're going to arrange our data into a features matrix and target vector. We're going to split our data into training and test sets. As far as how to use KNN and scikit-learn, it's very similar to other algorithms. You import the algorithm that you want to use. We're going to make an instance of our model. In this case, we're choosing nearest neighbors equals to 5. I encourage you to play with this. The next step is to train your model on your data. And from there, you can make predictions. The next step is we're going to visualize our data. If you remember the Vernoy diagram, here's our prediction space. Anything in the orange area is classified as orange. Anything in the blue area is classified as blue. Anything in this color is classified as this color. So one interesting thing about k nearest neighbors is that when k is low, knn is considered a low bias, high variance model. And when k is high, knn is considered a high bias, low variance model. And in the video, as k is increased, the classification space's borders become more distinct. In case you're curious, Here's the code that generated the video above. So one thing we didn't cover in this class is something called pipelines. And pipelines are a simple way to keep your data processing and modeling code organized. Specifically, a pipeline bundles pre-processing and modeling steps so you can use the whole bundle as if it were a single step. One of the primary benefits of this is cleaner code. You don't need to keep track of your training data at each step of processing. Accounting for data at each step can get a bit messy. This also means fewer bugs. There are fewer opportunities to misapply a step or two. So quickly, we're going to arrange our data into a features matrix and target vector. We're going to split our data into training and testing sets. And we're going to use a pipeline. We're going to scale our data. You can also apply PCA and then k-nearest neighbors. We can fit our data and then predict on it. This is a lot less code that you have to type in, so it's a lot less opportunity to mess up. 